But some they sound mad, and some they're just bad. We've got lads here that are doing are 20 years old that are on their fifth sentence. I was in the paper when I was like 14, 14 year old boy terrorised his neighbourhood, you know. <laughs> Big boy level. You don't even want to give us the money and that, probably torture you first, smack you up with a hammer in your head or something, or burn your toes with a basically a Bunsen burner. Then after that, if you see our face, then we have to, have to kill you, innit? The morals are all mixed up here. You say no, they'll turn around and say, I want to smash your face in. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's completely unpredictable. You could be standing there talking to prisoner and someone's had a porky around their head. What are you going to do? Welcome to hell. Welcome to hell! Aylesby Prison in Buckinghamshire is home to some of the most dangerous criminals in Britain. <laughs> Murderers, rapists, gangsters and paedophiles are housed here. What's frightening is that the oldest prisoners are just 21. So serious are some of their offences that one in five is serving life or an indeterminate sentence to protect the public. Officers engage in a daily battle of wits to ensure they keep control. But they must also try to help rebuild the fractured lives of these young men. Some quite difficult people, really. They're usually people who are doing quite long sentences for quite significant crimes. And we've got a lot of historical behaviour to unpick with them. A bit hard when, sort of like 17, 18 years, you've been told this is OK for you to do. And then you get arrested, go through the court's procedure, come to us, and then we try and unpick what parents and peers have told them is OK. There are some that just become perpetual problems for us. Aylesbury has always had a fearsome reputation among the prison population. In the world of prisons, there is this thought that Ellsbury is the worst establishment ever, and you know, if you go to Ellsbury, you're met by five burly screws that are just hanging about with a big club, and all that's going to happen is when you get off the bus, you're going to get clumped over the head. Every time a new one comes in, they're nervous because they've heard that there's a lot of gang problems, there's a lot of fights every day, up to four, seven times a day. But in the last year or so, it's quietened down. However, the violent incidents that do take place are very, very serious now. A lot of weapons are used. Pull key around your head, prison-made weapon in your throat, in your chest, in your head, in your forehead. There's no rules. And it's not one-on-one -on -one here. It could be six-on-one. And if staff don't intervene, potentially, we could have deaths here. The latest arrival is 18-year-old Caspian Hogg. He's been sent over 200 miles south from Lancaster Farms Young Offenders Institution because of his poor disciplinary record. How many times have you been in prison before? A couple, about four or five times. Okay. What's your sentence this time? Four years due to. Four years, okay. Have you ever used drugs, alcohol, solvents, or any other drugs? Yeah, yeah. OK. Um, what have you been using? Just cocaine, cannabis. That's Just cocaine? Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. There you go. Miss Morgan's your personal officer. So there's gang activity in your area, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which gang were you a member of? Stratford Longside. Stratford Longside. OK. Have you got any rival gangs? Yeah, Fallowfield, FMD. FMD? Yeah. What are the issues with them? They're just like opposite gangs that we used to bang against, like fight, fight with in prison. In prison? Yeah, in prison. So it's a prison gang, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. All the time, obviously, sitting in the cell, trapped in that, can't really do nothing, and then when something kicks off, I love it, because it's excitement, isn't it? Just makes your day more go quicker, and it makes it more lively, isn't it? When something goes down, when you're in the moment and you're fighting, bruv, you're fighting to survive so you don't get worked out. So they can come and smack you up, so you got to smack them down before they put you down, innit? 
I gotta put in the work on you. If you die, you die, innit? That's how it goes, innit? That's how it goes. We have gang members from Liverpool, from Birmingham, from London, and they'll be rivals. Some have come from the environment where all they know is fighting. Are they open them? It's like, are they open or are they not? They're, um, they're open. Yeah, the heating should be turned off tonight. But yeah, it's um, a bit hot in there. So, Michelle, we're getting a lot of pressure. It's a new environment, new surroundings. The first 24 hours being in a new prison is the most volatile time. Um, so we make sure that they're settled in and they're okay for their first night here. Gang rivalries mean that scores are constantly being settled. New boys are particularly vulnerable as they don't know the lie of the land and also need to prove themselves. As soon as an incident is spotted, an alarm is activated. To stop the situation getting out of control, first response officers race to the scene. You got any injuries? No, no, no. No? Was it over? No, no, no. no. Oh, come on. No, no, no. Must have been over something. No, no, no. What, people come normally just hit you? <laughs> I can tell you what it was about now. The lad has come in, a new lad. The fight he was in last week, and the lad was on evening. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I saw them both fighting, both of them throwing blows, both stamped on each other's head. Saying hello to each other. You're right. Yeah, fine. Punched the boot. But I'm I think it was anyway. It's probably his elbow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, can you not? When you come jail from the roads, it's more violent than when you're on road. Because you're seeing everyone from the roads and all, your, all of them all come together and it's just peak, in it. I've been brought up with a lot of violence, innit? But I didn't used to like it, but when I'm not juvie, you see, more, you see a lot of it, so you just get used to it and then after that, you just start to like it. You're, you're from that era, you roll with them. So obviously if I see you, I'm gonna crack off your head, innit? Or if it gets to a stent and I know that you stabbed one of my friends, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna stab you up, innit? So are you constantly looking out for who's gonna join the wing? Yeah, every day, every day. There's a couple of them on the on the next ring on C wing, and obviously if I see them, I'm gonna crack off their heads, innit? Straight away. And our whole day-to-day life in jail is not good, you know what I mean? You might be the biggest guy in the jail, or you might be have the name the hardest, you might have the biggest rep, you know, you've always got to wash your back. So it's always about, just most of the time, you're paranoid, if you know what I mean. You've got to, like, you're wary, it's more and more wary, you're wary of what people are up to, you've got to watch them. It's not, we're all, we're all criminals, you know what I mean? Even like I said before, right, I, I sometimes look to hurt people. I wake up some morning thinking, right, I'm not in the mood today. I feel like I'm serious, I feel like some days I think, right, I'm just going to hurt, like proper hurt me, yeah, because I wake up thinking, what's the point? Even though I've got 10 months left, yeah, I wake up thinking, what, what is the point? I might as well just go out there and do something to him. During their induction period, before they settle down, prisoners are offered jobs and educational courses. Those that accept will be able to spend more time associating with others. We've only got three staff in the landing, but we could be unlocking potentially up to 50 prisoners. So this is our sort of, you know, our dangerous time. We have to put the roots of guys. But you do get very complacent. You know, the lads are not the same. They're actually fine. But, um, you know, you have to wait, be wary, and it's a time to watch. The potential for things going wrong is ever-present. Caspian and two other newcomers have forced their way past the officer into another prisoner's cell. The officers can't enter the cell because the prisoners have barricaded the door. I want all prisoners locked up! The governor of Aylesbury is told that three new arrivals have taken another prisoner hostage on Sea Wing. 
The first indications are there's four prisoners in a cell. Four prisoners in a cell. It appears that one of them is a hostage. We're going to deploy negotiators to the cell door, try and start a dialogue, and then we'll take it from there. Well, my no. In danger. Now, that's forced us to put someone else in danger. So that message, that message will get to the governor. Do you understand, yeah? All lives in danger, so that's possible. Yeah, no, so fair enough. All three knew themselves from other jails, um, so obviously pre-planned. And your first concern is to whoever the hostage is. If you don't get a governor, I'm going to rape you. I'll rape you, you know. Listen, you don't have to hurt him, You'll get sp people will listen to you regardless. The absolute key role is the negotiators at that door reading the situation for us because if we're fearful that somebody's life's in danger then clearly we're obviously not going to negotiate. At that point we may actually have to intervene. It's all about the hostage knowing that there's staff out there and just gauging it because people say, I'm going to kill you but are they actually going to kill you? I don't like this jail symbol. I don't like it. You're not the, listen, you're not the only one. The difficulty I've got is I have prisoners from all over the place and some of them don't want to be here. And what I've got to be very careful about is if we start talking about transfers now, then I will have a hostage incident this afternoon because somebody else will think, oh, if I take him hostage, I can get a transfer. Threatening to rape him and cut his neck. Cut his fucking throat. Neck. Cut his fucking neck. I'll tell you straight now, yeah. It's happening, me. Taking it serious, I don't... No, everything's been taken serious. seriously. It's everything. Trust me on that. It's serious. A crisis command centre has been established by the governor to deal with the incident. It's decided to call in a national control and restraint team. They are trained to tackle situations where lives are at risk. Uh, just seem to have a t-shirt tied around his neck, sat on the bed. They have weapons which include a plastic knife and some broken glass. They're not happy being down here, they don't feel safe here. They want to go back up north, Liverpool, Manchester way. Um, one of them's only been here 24 hours, not even 24 hours. One's been here about nine days, all from the same area. Uh, they feel under duress from uh, the London boys and stuff here. Um, and they've had enough. The prison's own control and restraint team get ready to go in. They'll move if the situation threatens to get out of control. It's two hours since the siege began. Jason Harper is relieved by a second negotiator. She continues to deal with the hostage takers. Listen to me, okay? I'm not going to tell you lies. I've only told you what I know. The 40 degree heat is taking its toll. She's collapsed on the floor. <laughs> The hostage has lost consciousness. Right. Turn him on his side. Turn him on his side. Just tilt his head back to open his airway for me, please. Just, yeah, just, no, yeah, that's it on his Darren side. Darren Wright, Sandy, uh, feedback from uh, Julie is uh, just collapsed on the floor. Um, I'm assuming he's fainted. Julie is now talking and through putting him in the recovery position. The governor is informed of the development. He orders his own control and restraint team to rescue the victim. You've told me you want to come out. I'm just waiting. Once you know how it will happen, things will move on. After three hours, the hostage takers finally agree to surrender peacefully. Come here, is he? Let me have a look at him. The hostage can you let him out of here? No, he comes out last. The one in the white t-shirt. What's your name? That's you. Put your hands on your head. Step out of the cell slowly. Keep going. Caspian Hogg, who led the other two hostage takers into the cell, is escorted to the segregation block. One of them transferred in yesterday. He came from the segregation unit from the previous jail. Um, no for staff assaults, no for violence, no for weapons, no for barricades. He's done it all. He's a northern lad who can influence people quite quickly, so I guess that's what's been done. But we're trying to deal with it, so everything will work out in the end. When we get down the seg, we do a full search. Yeah, I'll be taking part in that. Yeah, and the manager, so we'll see if we get All three will be held in solitary confinement until their punishment is decided.
we manage some of the more problematic prisoners in the establishment um, if they break prison rules, for example, or pose a risk to various individuals or the establishment itself. They'll reside in the segregation unit for a, a specified period of time. So it's very important for the staff that work in the unit to be able to de-escalate kind of um, angry prisoners and, and get them to see reason and also be very aware of um, behaviour that can indicate further violence. A lot of young lads have said to me they've tried to be um, hard-working good citizens or words to that effect, um, but they found it too difficult. But they're young lads, you know. The prisoners will be punished for the damage they're doing. And I've just been being too good, yeah, and fucking, I don't, I've just been stressed out in it, so I just thought I needed something to do. And I thought to myself this morning, here's my chance. I'm not in my own. Just do, do a couple of things in it. That kid who took hostage today, he's probably the only person on the I, I, I don't like it. So I thought, let's get him in it. We hurt him, we didn't do anything to him. He punched me in the face, and I was kicked around in the ribs while I was being dragged around. And then one of them grabbed me from behind and uh, sat me on my bed and held me in like as if he was trying to break my neck. And uh, the other two lads were hitting the door with pool balls and a sock, um, where they'd smash my telly up as well. Uh, they used some of the glass to uh, put to my throat, saying they were going to uh, cut my throat. And they told me to get um, down completely naked, take all my clothes off. And they told me they were going to rape me. What happened? Oh, not in there saying uh, we, took, we took someone hostage. And assaulted them in his, uh, in his own cell, eh? so and kidnapped them, so you've sent it out to the outside police, innit? So we're just down on the block at the moment. Are you saying you didn't kidnap them? Nah, you just barricaded the door. You never kidnapped them. All these thoughts were going through my head, you know. Was I going to live or I'm going to die? I didn't, know, I didn't know these lads at all, you know. And it was just it was one of the most scary things ever. And why did you do it? But obviously, I haven't had a visit for six months and they've moved me all the way up here. So I'm trying to get back up north. I mean, there's only London people here, isn't it? Just obviously, I just want to get back up north. This is, these aren't my jails, these I want to be in one of my own jails. I passed out, and all I remember was them panicking because they thought, you know, maybe they'd killed me or something. You keep doing stuff, something officers do, shit it out. You alright, Liam? Yeah, I'm not bad actually. But better days down there. One of the young men that's um, in the cell, he's flooded his cell, he's got weapons, so he's used the, the handle off his mop. Give him instruction to hand it through. I'm going to relocate him into a new cell where there's no water. Oh, that's too short. No, it's fine, still got some more stuff. The prisoner has thrown out parts of the broom handle he was using as a weapon. That's too short. Why did you keep that bit? I know where that was. What? I know where that was. I asked you to throw it all out, didn't I? I know where that was. You open it just from the side, yeah? Just open it a little bit, shoot the bolt, yeah. then I'll kick it open and go from there. Start coming up backwards, slowly, step at a time. Don't turn around, keep facing the back wall. The prisoner disobeyed the order not to turn around. By the time the doors open, all negotiations are finished, we've done all the talking, it's either going to surrender or we're going to have to intervene. Stop struggling. Stop struggling. Yeah, if you do anything other than what I ask you to do, you're going to be restrained again, do you understand that? Yeah. Jolly good, right. Take a move like this. Yeah. Understand? Carry on. We've rarely used the force of what's necessary to be proportionate to the circumstances, but it does hurt. And it's a uh, full search, please. He'll now be strip searched in case he has any hidden yeah, weapons. Okay, 
Is there any uh, complaints about the way you've been treated? No, I'm not. Okay. okay. Yeah. What I'm asking you for now is to think about consequential actions. So you need to think about the right approach if you want to transfer, okay? Because I expect you to get in your bed and go to sleep. Is that okay? We've got to keep them and try and manage them in the segregation unit for quite a period of time. Otherwise, as I say, people will be just taking people hostage all the time, thinking it gets them a move the next day. The mess made by the hostage takers is cleaned up by trusted prisoners. That's on the easy way, haven't I? I've made this sentence as easy as possible. It's what you make of it. If you're a dickhead the whole time and you're... You're going to be down a block, nickings, no soch, no TV, this shit. Well-behaved prisoners help run internal services. This gives them much more time outside their cells while they're working. Josh is in charge of laundry in the segregation block. If wrong is wrong, then wrong is right. If good is good, then good is bad. They're fucking us over. While in the segregation block, Caspian complains about hearing voices in his head and asks for psychiatric help. I've got to try and find out if you're someone that plays mind games. Mind games? Mind games. Mind. Whether you try and suss folk out and wind them up and see what buttons you can press. <laughs> yeah? No, I was serious at all. And I might ask you questions that get you angry. Yeah, yeah. You are allowed to be angry. What you're not allowed to do is be violent. I am a violent person, miss. I am a... Mm -hmm. I, I, look at my record. Yeah. Since I was 11 and 10, I've been in children's home, and I've always been restrained. I've bit him. I, bit, I was only 11, I, I, bit, I bit one man's chest open. I bit Mrs. ear, and I was always getting restrained in and out of children's homes, and I, and I always had that, that, that same feeling, man. I have a feeling inside that my fate is that I am going to kill someone. Does the prospect of going out, doing something like that, and then coming back to jail on a life, or if it's serious enough on a whole life, does that bother you? Depends, miss. Depends. When I'm in the mall, no. I don't give a shit, you get me, but... I don't think I'm a nutcase yet, but I think I'm, I'm like, if I carry if I don't get help now, then I'm gonna end up, end up being a nutcase, innit? I am not 100% convinced that he is actually mentally ill. He is certainly mentally disordered. Because not only does he have the violent thoughts, I mean, lots of people have violent thoughts, and that is good, but it's not a major problem. He has the enjoyment of violence to go with those thoughts and to feed those thoughts and to feed the fantasies. And I think his behaviour may well lead to someone's death. Liam Brennan, one of the three accused of taking a prisoner hostage, has asked for a meeting with his lawyer to prepare his defence. Our plan was to just go and grab the kid, keep him there, close the door. It's my duty to not play down the offending, but to try and get an insight into why it happened, how it happened, what your involvement was. Not to absolve yourself from any liability, not to say, look, I didn't do anything. Now, there's a range of sentences, as you know. I'm hoping that the district judge won't be, um, won't have in his mind that additional days are necessary. I, I can't fuck up. Yeah. Because I haven't spoke to her mum or the baby for like over a year. Yeah. And she just got in contact like a few days ago. Mm -hmm. And I want to be out for that. I told her I'm out like the 11th of December 2013. The Crown Prosecution Service decided not to prosecute Brennan, so he now faces an internal hearing. Sit down, Mr. Brennan, please. I'm a judge, nothing to do with the prison. Do you understand that? Yeah. And I think you're represented today by Mr. Hammond. That's right, is it? So, yes. Can you identify yourself, officer? Officer Hartman. And you're the reporting officer? Yes. So, on the 29th of May, it said you detained a person against his will. Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Mr. Hammond? What was the most amount of involvement that you saw Mr. Brennan do? He spent a lot of time talking to me at the door about why they were there, what their intentions were. I, I, I don't wish to put any words in your mouth, but I'm suggesting to you that he didn't threaten any force or use any force. 
the Prime Minister. When you were in there, did you make it abundantly clear to Mr Harper that you were happy to cooperate with... Well, you're leading, aren't you? I have. Well, don't, please. You're aware of the law about joint enterprise, and uh, it's rather like the getaway driver in a bank robbery. He's still nonetheless guilty of an offence of robbery, although he doesn't actually go into the bank and help himself. Mr Brennan apparently had no physical contact with this other prisoner who was apparently being detained. Did you see either of the other two having hold of Mr... I never seen me. My eyes never seen no one hold him. How big's the cell? Smaller. The prison cell. Well, I find it absolutely inconceivable that you can say that... You're saying that that, that didn't happen then? I'm not because you, it couldn't have happened without you but seeing it, could it? I'm not saying it didn't happen. All I'm saying is I never seen it with my eyes. I was the opposite way. As you heard of Mr Harper, I was speaking to Mr Harper for, a, for quite a long period of time. It's totally and absolutely clear to me that you three were all in this together and don't have any hesitation in finding you guilty. I impose 32 additional days. Do you understand all of that? I understand. Thank you. These proceedings are finished. Thank you. Why do you think it never got mentioned in there that the guy was stripped and threatened with rape? That yeah, surprised me. Yeah, it surprised me, but, you know, <laughs> happy days, innit? <laughs> the police did not proceed with criminal assault charges because the hostage was too frightened to testify. When prisoners are in segregation, privileges, including television, are withdrawn. Huh? What's that? Brennan is refusing to go back to his cell unless he's given a TV so he can watch the England versus Ukraine football match. I can't hear you. Already sensitive. Already sensitive. I've been down here for another two weeks yet. I was telling all that. So obviously I might as well just get in more trouble. I don't want to see you down here for any longer than you need to because actually you're quite decent. I am. I would rather go and get you some activity pack or some painted by numbers or uh, ask education for something. We'll get you settled. That's me, Liam Brennan, yeah. Asking for education. That never happened since I was 11 years of age. And I'm asking for education, but that's our boarding. Michelle eventually manages to make Brennan see the sense of returning to his cell. For his part in the hostage taking, Caspian has 38 extra days added to his sentence. Caspian, is the last chance to walk yourself out? We've got to take you out. The officers try hard to reason with him but he refuses to return to his cell. He'll be held in segregation until the governor decides it's safe for him to associate with the other prisoners. If you do not follow instructions, yeah, you will be restrained again. Do you understand? Okay. No one will ever beat the system. There's a regime, there's procedures, there is laws that you have to follow, whether you're a prisoner or you're a prison officer. No one will ever beat this system. On the outside, you class an 18 year old as an adult. In here, they haven't matured into adults. Some can be easily influenced by others. They can get themselves in trouble. Yeah, they're popping back on the wing, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'll tell you now, I'm gonna hurt someone. It's serious, I'm not fucking about no more. They put me back on the wing, I'm not gonna mess about with these little shitty fucking hostages, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hurt someone real, real good. Serious, man, I'm gonna hurt someone proper. And I just, my head just, whew, split personalities, man, they're pissing me off, everything, everyone, everything. He's been like, I need to speak to someone, man, and my head's up my ass. My head even feels big, mate, my head feels rah. Like, I've got so much shit going on in my head, yeah. Like, I just feel, I feel, I feel mad. There are people who I think, I don't want to see them out in the community for a very long time. And we may at times be working with people actually just to help them cope with being in prison. But I have never met anyone that 
I didn't feel that there was something that we could do to help them respond to the environment they're in in a more positive way. Caspian Hogg's mental state continues to be monitored. What other treatment do you think you need? What other treatment? What else do you think that I can do that's going to help you? Nothing. I don't think there's anything else, though. Really, really, really. Anyway. Do you think you need things like um, to learn more about your emotions, about how to control your emotions? No, nah, I don't think I need to work on emotions, really, no. Because I know what they are, they're just not there, if you get what I'm saying. I'll try and cry and it won't happen. I can't cry or anything like that, unless I'm in like, I'm already crying if you, and it just comes out of nowhere. You're one of them ones like, you know what I mean, isn't it? I can't, if something emotional happens, I won't cry. Sometimes I laugh if something bad happens. Is it more normal for you to think about people's feelings or to not think about people's feelings? Depends when you get me. Now, this is me, yeah, I'm starting to chat to you on a level, yeah, saying that I do like you getting me, but if you caught me on another day where I'm in a mad mode, yeah, because some, like I say, for that vision, yeah, then that's when it is. I don't look at things right, man, I look at things in a different, psychotic way. And since I've been a kid, I've never been one, I've never wanted to be a policeman, a fucking anything, do you get me? I've always had this, this, even since being eight and nine and seven, like, I always wanted to kill people. And my dad ended up getting murdered when I was about six. And it's crackers, man, it's sending me, like, it's all fun, like, fuzzing round and shit in my head, man. On Thursday? Yeah. Got an appointment to see the psychiatrist? Yeah, that's nice. Yep. Nice. I don't know what time it's going to be. Yeah. It is possible that he'll prescribe you some medication. Yeah. I'd be happy if he gives it me, but if he doesn't give it me, then obviously, I'm, I feel, like, like, mad at it. Oh, so piss you off. Yeah, it'll piss me off, innit? My personal belief is that we're not born evil. We learn from our environment and from the world around us how to react to that world. And if there are some people who learn that the best way to act with the world around them is through aggression or violence, Special daddy, how much do I love you? And then when you open it like it says, this much, you get me? Because his father was murdered when he was six, Caspian is very conscious of his role as a parent. I don't want my son to grow up and be put in situations that I've been put in. Do you know what I mean? Like, now I'm older, like I was 14 when he had him, you know what I mean? I wasn't... I wasn't all there. I was always blazing weed, grafting, doing stupid stuff. And it, oh, that was, I was a kid still, so I was kiddish things were still going on in my head. Now I'm maturing and I've got to take responsibility for my son. And I want him to learn, I want him to see set things like, do you know, so, do you know what I mean? So he's, 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 he's smart up here and I don't want him to be in situations that I'm in, like down the block in London, or even being in prison or having to commit crime, I want to be there for him so he can either speak to me, he can come to me for money, he can, when he needs, you know, do you know what I mean? I, I, I want to be a dad to my son, that's what it is. It's, it's like them three letters, yeah, it's, it's about being a dad. It's fucked up, isn't it? Kind of like not seeing him and that, really and truly, but you have to hold your head down and just keep it up. As long as you speak to him and phone him and that, then it's all right. Devon was just 15 when his son was born. At the time, yeah, I didn't really want a kid, but it just happened, innit? She was t talking to me a lot about it, and I just said to myself, you know what, might as well have a kid at my age, innit, car? You never know when someone's gonna take your life, or you don't know when you're gonna go, so it's best to have it early than, than late. Are you serious? Does that cross your mind that you might end up getting murdered or killed or something? Yeah, obviously, car, in my hood, there's a lot of violence, innit? That like, people dying in that, innit? You never know, you can walk across the road and they can run you over, innit? For some prisoners, telephone is the only way for them to keep in touch with their children. Uh, daddy's missed you, yeah? No, uh, you can't see me now. Daddy's busy, yeah? Daddy's busy feeding all types of animals. I don't know how this goes, and I don't want to set it up wrong and then say, fool on someone. In the prison chapel, Josh is helping prepare for a special Father's Day occasion when well behaved prisoners will be allowed to spend time with their children. I can hear it on the floor and roll around with him, I can play, run around, I can chase him. See, on a visit, he always wants me to chase him. 
but you can only get so far before I have to say I can't get up. Do you know what I mean? To be with him for a good five hours, through the fun, the crying, on a wrestling him so bad, it's grabbing me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Judge <gasps> Well done. I don't like it that he comes here and he knows how to be searched, but I'd rather have that relationship with him. Yay, I've got something to change for. I mean, I've got a kid and a fiance and a family that, that want me to, to be there, kind of thing. Be honest, if I didn't have my kid and I didn't have my fiance, then. I don't think I'll probably be as good as I have been. <gasps> Come in, my little boy. I've got them. I've got them to look after. I mean, they're counting on me getting out. Put your cape. Yeah, you can put it in. Are you yeah, being a pussycat? <laughs> if I'm good, I get everything back. <laughs> it's easy. You know what I mean? If I'm good, I get it. If I'm not, I don't. A little bit of ball. A bit cheeky. <laughs> I miss his first time he kicked the football, the first time he was running around, the first time he said a sentence. I've missed taking him to the park, I've missed him coming out in nappies, now he goes to the toilet, now he's a big boy, he thinks. Do you know, it's things like that, just everything. I've missed everything. I want to be there to put him to sleep, to wake up with him. Do you know what I mean? He sneaks into his mum's bed at night. I want to be there when he does that. Right, ladies and gentlemen, do you want to start sort of like saying goodbyes then? You're right. <laughs> when I first knew I was coming to prison, I thought that he'd forget about me. We was only 18. We had been together for like three years, two and a half years. But this is a big test on teenagers to be loyal and, and faithful as well, especially. When you're in jail, stuff like that goes around in your head. That's all you think about. So you need someone that you trust, really trust, to be able to get through it. Otherwise, it tears you apart. I could sit in it every night and think she's cheating on me, she's cheating on me. See ya. Love you. <sighs> Specialist dogs have been called into Aylesbury Prison to hunt for drugs and other contraband items. A lot of drug dealers in prison and they want to continue. There's a lot of money to be made for selling the drugs. Mobile phones are just a bigger problem. That's why the dogs are trained to find them. It could be used for planned escapes. All sorts of crime events could be used with the mobile phone. We search cells on a daily basis and find find stuff on a daily basis. Right, we'll step outside your cell. As soon as they see the dogs, we can have people running for cover. The prisoners are removed from their cells to let the dogs work without being obstructed. How do you know he's found something? Uh, he'll freeze and just nudge it with his nose or just put his nose on it. Uh, if he can't can get to it, but he can still pick up the scent and just sit and look in the general direction. Sure, I'm not interested in there, but I'm just looking at the window. See if there's anywhere around the window. At least flick the end of the split right the window. That window area and that bed area, that's where he keeps going back. Why I come sleeping and then you're bringing a dog in my room to go and above my stuff in that room. That's lost, bro. Our team of searchers are now actually going to uh, carry out a search throughout the cell to see what the actual dog was indicating on. Dog indicating a certain area, so they'll concentrate on that area first. And hopefully, we'll find something. The dogs continue going through all the cells on the wing. And when you open it, you can smell it. Yeah, they'll definitely be smoking cannabis. It's whether he indicates in here or not. Yeah, you can smell it. Yeah, there's drugs and phones all over, John. People used to hide their shit in the sink, like undo the screws here, the nail clippers or whatever, just put it in there. So that, that's all I'm telling you. <laughs> when you got a phone, you can call whoever you want, text whoever you want, you can have nighttime one day views with your missus on the phone, you see what I'm saying? Like, talk about whatever you want, sort shit out, sort your money out, sort your business out and vote. Have you ever had a phone in something? Yeah. It's powerless. It's too. I've got rid of it. It's too power. Too powerless. Way too powerless. 
No matter what they will get you, the first time, yeah, they got away with it. Ah, yeah, gloves can't find my shit. Second time, can't. But you know the gloves ain't getting my shit. Third time, come, your blood, they come close, you know. Man, they palm it off on someone. As soon as they palm it off on that person, that person's gonna get spun. Next week, boom, someone else got spun. Can't relax because these girls have intelligence. They do, they haven't been known to hide mobile phones in there on the basis that we won't go in because it's uh, very dirty. Sue cards, phones, anything, you name it, they'll try and hide it. And we're usually three steps behind because once we find a place, they're looking for another one. Broken aerial can be made into a prison chain. So we'll take that, it's not attached to the stereo. A lot of them like looking at pictures, of course. There's a lot of self-abuse going on. We went into the cell and inside this one, mobile phone charging paraphernalia. So we sent the teams back in to, um, to check them again. We found a few little things and more importantly for me, it's uh, been about asserting our control and letting prisoners know that we can do this whenever we feel like, like doing it. And it's interesting to see some of the reactions of some of the prisoners who clearly didn't like the idea that we're actually going to have a dog go around this cell. Five weeks after taking a prisoner hostage, Liam Brennan is returned to his old cell. That's not a problem, we can get that, that's not a problem. When the pits are in my babies and that, that's not right, that is it. Hey, what's that? What's that? You're the problem. If you've got a problem with me taking that kid hostage, you come in and do something. Please. Like I just told you to when he was by yourself. Leave. Otherwise, fuck off. Please. Please. I think this is all acceptable. Pitch is wet and the boxes and socks wet. And he tries to tell me that's acceptable. Right. I want to see it. I want to see would have had to be searched. I think that, that's a say. It's that. It's a say. Come on, be serious. So that was stuck the together. Next, the good. next day, that you that padlock that you saw in your cell, yeah. that would have been put on there, and we have not unlocked that this cell for five weeks. Problems in there. He was going to start chucking things back on my face. Or was it? I don't know it. what was said, but is there any point getting in more trouble? No, I've seen that. Just point literally, enough. I've gone to let someone come on here. That, that, that's just fine. I know, but you've literally just come on here. The best thing to do is to keep your head down. At the end of the day, the impression that staff have got who have just come on this wing to work is that you're Liam Brennan, you've taken another prisoner hostage and you've caused problems down the side gobbing off. Oh. That is the only impression staff have of you. Do you see what I mean? Oh, that's they keep going on about how staff disrespect them, staff speaks to them rudely, but it goes the other way. You speak to us rudely, you disrespect us, and you want us to tiptoe around you like, like you're a trial, child and try and teach you the ways of prison when actually you're 18, 21. You should, you should know how to be an adult, you should know how to respect people. Good behaviour can lead to prisoners being moved closer to home. When I ring Tasha in the morning, I hear seagulls and stuff. And then when I go to Lewis, it should be down the road, and it'll be like we're under the same sky now. That's what it feels like, do you know what I mean? We're, we're at the same place, I'll be able to see or hear the same things she's hearing. I still feel that I'm going home soon. Josh will finish his sentence near his family. Keen to stop his violent behaviour and get back home. Caspian has agreed to take anti-psychotic medication. Stops whatever's going on in my head, yeah. It's working. And end up in ways, it's not proper. Life. I wake up in the morning with your mad dots on the pillowcase where I've been slavering at the night time. And I got a pillow, man, I forgot about that as well. Do they make you feel better, though? Are they stopping the thoughts? Yeah, they are stopping the thoughts in ways, but it's the way they make you feel. I like that feeling of being a bit like twisted, yeah, but this it makes you like 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 a mad medicated weirdo. <laughs> like it's some sick medication that they've got me It's not good. The violent fantasies, the violent thoughts, the wish to commit particular murders to become notorious for them have now diminished greatly and he, he's actually reporting that those thoughts have gone to the extent that sometimes he feels his head is just empty. What I would be hoping to do with him now 
is work with him so he can recognize what was happening and if he feels violent thoughts coming back, what he can do to gain help at that time. 90% of the prisoners we get in here, they just knuckle down, do what we ask them to do, the odd blips here and there, and that's it. But there's the remaining ones that are the ones that really are the problem ones for us and probably cause 90% of our issues. They just don't want to settle down. They're constantly rebelling against what we want them to do. They're constantly trying to arrange things to happen in the jail and trying to disrupt what we're trying to do.